Hello and welcome to episode 8 of When the Flames Go Up, the ATFC podcast. Got a panel of Joe and Julian this evening to discuss their uh, their thoughts on the Kidamitsu away game and Bromley at home. And we also look ahead to Rochdale at home and Wildstone away. Uh, this evening we've also recorded the uh, first in a series of Older Shots all-time 11s. Uh, the first one is going to be loan players you've fallen in love with. Great fun. And it'll be coming out after the Gateshead postponement weekend. That's the plan. And it'll come out as a bonus pod. And hopefully it's a bit of fun. Obviously we'll have lots of other suggestions. But if you've got any suggestions, send them into to at gmail.com. And I will let you know if we decide to go with it. So thanks for your contributions and enjoy this episode eight. Right, here we go then. We've uh, got two games to remark upon, um, as we were just discussing off off air. uh, Two very different performances from Aldershot Town. From Saturday, Kidderminster away, bottom of the league. Phil Brown's first game as manager. Um, Aldershot went 2-0 up. Through Josh Stokes, and then Tolaj was fought, fell in the box, um, and Harry's put us 2 0 up through that penalty. Um, and then we were 2 all by half time and 4 2 by the end of things. So, read into that what you will. Uh, defensively, it was um, quite something. And that was the kind of 25th goal in seven games that we'd conceded. So, caused uh, plenty of uh, consternation on social media. Um, and then we followed that up on Tuesday with uh, second in the league, Bromley at home. First game at the rec for a while and uh, a solid performance, a one-all and plenty of chances to uh, to discuss. So I'm going to come to you first, Joe, because you were at Kidderminster, um, as as was I and Ian, who was uh, not on the pod this week. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that performance and um, where it all went wrong? Well, I think it's always hard when you play a team with a new manager because it's a slight unknown quantity. Obviously, he's not had that much time, so he's not going to have changed their squad massively. But one of Kidderminster's main problems has been their goal scoring. They actually haven't conceded much this season at all. So we were never going to easily turn them over and score loads like we have done against other teams. Um, But what they did do is um, continue to defend well. um, But we gifted them goals, which they've struggled to score. Um, so with a team that's struggling to score, when you make the defensive errors we made on Saturday, um, even at 2-0 up when, when we those errors came, um, I think it was, was it Harry's who was um was sort of shuffling the ball back towards a new probably a new goalie communication might not have been as well established. But um we gave them that goal um by giving the penalty away and we gave them a, a way back into the game. Um, at 2-0 up. It's the sort of the worst thing and the worst timing for that. Um, I thought they were very physical. I think, I don't know whether Rowe was ill or whether he just wasn't in the squad for that game, but I think a player like Kobe Rowe, perhaps for that game, was someone we really could have done with in the defence against their very physical front line. Um, I think it is Morgan Smith was his name. Um, he won everything in the air. I don't think he lost a single header. Um so yeah, perhaps I'm not sure when what went when with Rowe, but perhaps that might have been a better selection. But I'm not the manager. Um, yeah, what else have I got down here? Yeah, the main thing is the defensive issues. To be honest with you, that was the that was the glaring thing. Um, our goal was good. First goal on the counter is a classic Older Shot Town 2023-24 goal. Um, but I haven't got many standout performances from the shots from that game. I think. We sing their praises a lot, these players. And I think some of the players that have received a lot of praise had an off day all at the same time. Um, I think wasn't one of Glover's best games, but that's just me being very picky. I don't think anyone can really be singled out for a, a really bad performance when none of them were really more than a six out of 10. So yeah, when there's loads and I'm sure um, Julian will cover some more. So I'll, uh, I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting you say, yeah, with the Harry's, kind of the ball over his shoulder was pretty much exactly the same as the Bishop Stortford, um, mm. I think second or third goal, um, well, just indecision. So, I mean, that's with two, um, two different goalkeepers. Um, and 
yeah, that needs sorting out. We need to decide if we're going to clear it or pass it around in those situations. And I think both times they should have been cleared to the nearest exit. If that's behind the goal, it doesn't matter. It's a bouncing looping ball and a, an attacker is running onto it and they've got the momentum. So um, get rid in those situations. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll come to you, Julian. I, I, I don't know if you've seen the the highlights, presumably from from the game, which which provide a good a good snapshot of the uh, the issues that we've got going on at the back for that game. What did you think of it? Yeah, I saw the saw the highlights. Um, I think just to address Joe's point with regard to uh, the goalie missing and Kobe Rowe, I'm just wondering whether there's it, it's the schedule that's coming up over the next sort of few weeks. We've got so many games lined up. I'm sure he's going to be giving some of the guys a complete rest. The, yeah, they weren't even on the bench. And yet they obviously um, played on Tuesday. So it may just be a, a simple sort of rotation that he's looking to do. But um, yeah, I, I was really impressed with um, with Kidderminster, to be honest. Um, we were just saying off air that the two games were just everything you need to know about Aldershot, really, at the moment. Um, you can never predict the score. Um I think we made them look good, to be honest. You know, the 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 third goal, I think it was, where guy just launched the ball into the into the middle. Uh, Morgan Smith jumped for it with Ollie Harfield, won the header, and it just sort of looped in the corner. I mean, nine times out of ten, that's not going to be a goal, but it just so happens that with our luck, it it was was a goal. Um, I think the most disappointing thing is that. You know, being 2 0 up, even though it was against the run of play, you know, being 2 0 up, it still didn't feel when I was listening to the commentary that we had a control of the game. And it just felt to me as if it was inevitable, inevitable that Kidderminster were going to score. Um, but you, again, you've got to give them credit because they're bottom of the league. If you go 2 0 down, you're bottom of the league. You're Normally the heads drop, but um, they didn't. So you know, credit where credit's due. They've got the real result they've followed up with a, a victory uh, in midweek as well so you know they um just shows you what a, a bit of confidence can do but uh, for me the the defense does need sorting you know if you look back over the last six or seven games then we have conceded a, a lot of goals um i think we've missed haji Minoga, although when he comes back i'd like to see him in the back three um, now that we've got Aaron Jones back, I think Aaron Jones played uh, excellently against Bromley, actually, in his first full 90. So, um, you know, as, as Joe said, you know, we're not the managers, but uh, for me at the moment, perhaps Kieran Harris needs a bit of a rest. And I would probably stick Kobe Rowe in the centre with Milogra on the right and stick with Ollie Harfield on the left of the back three at the moment. Um I was going to say before last night's result that perhaps we should be putting Ollie Harford back in the, the wing back role, but um I think Glover at the moment is undroppable. He um he's played superbly yesterday. I was so impressed with him. Um and it looked like he was really happy to be there as well. So um yeah, although I wasn't at the Kidderminster match, um I think it was probably the right result on the day. And poor defending, which I think was which we'll come on to in a minute was you know partly sorted out in the the Bromley game. Yeah, yeah, I think there was generally in the Kidderminster game quite a few similarities to the Bishop Stortford defeat as well. Where as soon as we're hassled and harried at the back, but the the way we normally play, which is calm and relaxed up to the halfway line, and then find a way to get it to midfield or move it into Stokes. As soon as a team cuts that off, we don't. We then can't go forward and we look shaky at the back. And I, yeah, to have that in two games in a row, I think was was a real worry because then it looked like, well, if any if every team turns up and does what most teams can do, which is pressure our back line and, and force a mistake, then I, yeah, it got me really worried. On the train home, I was just like, well, every team's going to just suss this out now. They're just going to keep doing that forever. And then we'll we'll come about seventeenth again, um, and then lo and behold, three days later we've got a performance against Bromley, which we were allowed to have the ball a bit more. We looked comfortable. We defended really well for most part, 
obviously we we let a few chances come our way, which is the way this uh, Widrington team plays. But um, yeah, what a, what a turnaround from how I was feeling on on Saturday afternoon um, to uh, to Tuesday night. Um, I was, yeah, I was just going to say on the, my score predictions. I said I said if Kid Kidmits were going to score two goals this season, it would probably be against us, and they went and uh, went and scored four. So. I feel broadly broadly vindicated, but um, not, in, not in a great way. Um, I guess the next the next kind of big question that came from the weekend was the the midfield too. Um, so I suppose now we've seen we had Theo and Frost in the midfield too for Kidderminster away, and then a Dejan Tetek and O'Keefe for Bromley. Um, Joe, do you want to come in and um, and your kind of your thoughts on the midfield too, and uh, I guess who you'd who you'd put in there for for Saturday? Yeah, I mean it's it's a sort of ongoing conundrum for the for shots fans at the moment, isn't it? Is is that midfield and and what makes it tick? I think I'm I'm loath to criticise our players too much, considering the season we're having, um, and I don't think there's lack of effort from anyone. I think both Widrington and O'Keefe's best games have been alongside a mobile midfielder. Um, that's how I think they operate. The t- the two of them together. Um, I don't think they're bad players necessarily. I just think they don't necessarily fit together in the system that we're trying to play. Um, against Bromley, Petek was a much more mobile midfielder and I think allowed O'Keefe to play his short passing game a lot better and sort of set Tetek off with those runs forwards and Stokes off. Um, Frost, again, is more mobile. So one of Frost or Tetek alongside one of the others. Um, I don't think we've had a Frost Tetek combination yet, so we can't say that's our best midfield. Even if some may think that's our two best midfielders, until we've actually seen it, we can't really be saying it's the best. But I, I think both of those are potentially less physical players, um, more mobile players, and I think Widrington and O'Keefe perhaps more sort of putting the challenges in. But um, that said, Tetek against Bromley, um, put in some excellent tackles. Um, I think he was. Well, it was an absolute class above um, against Bromley last night. He just, yeah, I don't think he misplaced a pass all game. And I think uh, we've been worried about some of our players being scouted. But if he starts to come into the team now and anyone was watching that performance last night, he was, I was in awe really of, of that midfield performance. Um, other players are going to get the credit, I think. But I think he was the unsung hero last night. Um, so, my yeah, my select midfield for older shot at the moment for Saturday. Uh, let's go. It's a lottery, isn't it? Let's go with um let's go with Tetek and probably who I want or who will play. I think it will be Tetek and O'Keefe again, maybe. But he might try Tetek and Frost. But it was Tetek's first full ninety yesterday and he has been out of the team for a while. I'm presumably injured because he never played poorly when he was in the squad. And I think I recall him um having a knock. So yeah, I'll go with those two. <laughs> really concrete answer for you there. <laughs> And we also, yeah, without without adding in Willard as well to that conundrum. Um, so I'll, I'll let Julian, um, of stir, course, yes, yeah. <laughs> stir on that a little bit more. Um, what do you think about the uh, the midfield two from the last couple of games? And uh, yeah, who would you stick in there for Saturday? Yeah, I'm I'm going with Joe. Uh, I think Keith, O'Keefe and Witherington together just doesn't work. Both quite similar players. Um, both lacking a bit of confidence. I think over the last few games as well. And to see Tetek in there last night, I was really looking forward to seeing him play actually. And um f- first half I was uh, along the, the side, Northwest Central. So I got a really good view of of Tetek and, and how he works. And his um, his thinking is the difference, I think, between between the, the other players and, and him. He's he's just one step ahead. He is always looking to see where the pass is going to go. He's looking around him before he's received the ball. Every single pass he made was absolute quality. It was like he he programmed it. Uh, what I liked about him as well is two-footed. So if someone's coming in from one side, he can change feet, change his balance really quickly. He's got a low center of gravity. And like Joe said, he just, I thought he was absolutely superb last night. And um, was, it was a real difference. And I think he, he made O'Keefe look a bit more solid as well. Just allowed uh, O'Keefe to do what he does does well. And 
he had, I thought he had his best game too, although there were a couple of the usual um, O'Keefe moments where I think uh, I, I caught up with you, Will, just after the game, didn't I? And uh, we were both commenting on how it sometimes just oddly bounces off a part of his body, which just seems absolutely bizarre. But um, I thought he, he played well. And I think for Saturday, um, you know, again, we don't know what Tommy's going to do, but my guess would be that perhaps two ninety minutes for Tetek might be a bit too far in such a short space of time. So um, I'm going to go for O'Keefe and Frost to start and probably Tetek and Witherington on the bench and hopefully with Tetek coming on perhaps after 60 minutes. That'll be, that's, that's my guess for you. Nice. Yeah, as you say, it's it, it is going to be a bit of a lottery on on what we get on on Saturday, and we don't know if uh, you know someone's going to fall ill in the next uh, couple of days with uh, an EBB bug going around or something, the EBB strain of something. Um, that, that that's not the sponsorship kind of deal they wanted, was it? Um, just wanted to mention uh, for the Kidderminster away game. Obviously, um, Geordie wasn't in goal. Jasper Shake made his debut. Um, Obviously, couldn't have picked a worse game for a debut because he had so much to do, um, and was yeah, it was unlucky with the Morgan Smith header that came across him. I think having watched the highlights, it, it is a good, a well placed header, and I don't think he could have got there. Um, and yeah, made the penalty save to deny Ashley Hemmings a hat trick. So fair play to him. Hope he, uh, hope he's on the bench for a few games this season and. Um, yeah, get some get some loan experience while Geordie's manning the sticks. Um, so yeah, I guess we've covered a fair amount of the Kidderminster game. We can we can chat a bit more about the Bromley home game. Um, and yeah, the fact we've got a, a good a nice draw against them, but we felt like we had plenty of chances. Um, that second half felt like we had four four or five chances in the box, and uh, yeah, a couple from long range. You had Toladge's swirling effort Glover's swirling effort when he cut in from the the left so plenty of chances against the probably the second best team in this league so um Joe I'll come to you first um yeah what were your thoughts on on the Bromley game and and yeah was it two points dropped as as Julian asked me last night was it two points dropped or one point gained yeah it's a really good question I think I wrote down loads for this game last night because I mean, there were so many positives, um, which was nice because it was, yeah, polarised from Saturday where I left feeling slightly demoralised. Um, th- one of the first things I put down actually was Harfield and Glover on the left-hand side. Um, that link-up was excellent. Um, with Glover on sort of pushing the wings, it actually allowed Harfield to sort of cut inside with some of his runs because obviously Glover's a harder player and faster player to mark out of the game. Um, so there's a lot more space created there, which in turn created space for Stokes and the and Tolage and a lot more space to run into. Um, I think Aaron Jones being back is might be key to our season. Um, I think if you watch him um, off the ball, he's marshalling the defence. He is, is a captain. Um, I think he really G's the players on um, and we looked a lot more defensively organised. Um, which we, as we know, and as we discussed, we have not been for the past two games organised in defence. Um, Bromley were a really hard team to break down, actually, um, are a hard team to break down, and we made them look quite ordinary defensively. Um, and if you look at their results, and not many teams have been able to do that. And I was listening to um, Andy Woodman's post-match interview, and he was he said, you're not going to face many front threes like that in this division, many better attacks. Um and I think I think that's true. Really, we we we're very aware of of how lethal our front three were. But I think last night, goals aside, um, they were absolutely devastating getting into the final third. Um, but unfortunately, those guilt edge chances we did have, um, we just couldn't quite put them away. Uh, Thomas had a chance at the end, which, when you look on the face of it, you'll actually miss that. But you look at it slowed down; it's actually a fantastic challenge from the Bromley defender. Um, I, and I think Thomas was trying to get it over the defender's leg, um, but it's it, almost an impossible finish. Um, but it's easy for fans to say from the stands that their nan could have scored it, but I'd like to see him try. Um, I think he gets a lot of unnecessary criticism, actually, Kwame Thomas. Um, he comes on to sort of win headers 
And um, actually, he wins quite a lot of free kicks um, in the final third towards the end of the game. So I think depends what you're, he's not going to score as many goals as the other front three. That's not what he's been known for. And when you look at his previous clubs, he isn't a, an out and out goal scorer. He's more of a target man. Um, one thing I put wrote down in cap i wrote it in capitals on my uh, phone notes here it must have been important i actually put this is this is words coming out of my mouth about a national league referee i put the referee was excellent um i've not seen a game flow like that in a long time there were challenges physical challenges lots of 50 50s but the ref was very reluctant to give them and um, bromley like they have a certain play style and a certain way they like to try and win free kicks. And that's not a criticism. That's that's part of football nowadays. But the ref, I thought, didn't buy a lot of it. And he let the game flow for both sides. And I think it made for a much more entertaining spectacle. And I think it was nice to see that. Not enough refs do referee like that. Um, it makes for a much better game, really. And that's what we're there for, entertainment, isn't it? So um, I've got loads more I've written down, but I don't want to keep going. Um, but the other thing I wrote was Kobe Rowe I thought was superb and um, either team could have won it but it did feel like two points dropped just because of the amount of chances we had um, but if Bromley put their chance away at the end that would have been no points and that would have been the worst outcome so I think overall we will take the point but feeling slightly disappointed there you go <laughs> yeah well no fair play I think I, yeah, I'm still un, none the wiser on if it's a. I think it definitely is a point gained against Bromley. I think they were. You say that chance at the end. I feel like that was. You should get that on target. Also, maybe Thomas should have got it on target, potentially. But I don't even know how you get it over and and down. To be honest, and the ref. Yeah, I think it was the same ref that we had at Chesterfield away. Um, and it's like he he'd watched that game back and decided to change his complete refereeing ethos because he was giving everything at Chesterfield, any little push in the back. Whereas last night was, uh, yeah, most most things were just going, he was just letting them go. I mean, for the first 10 minutes, I don't think he used his whistle either, which was, I, I assumed I'd gone deaf or wasn't hearing the whistle like like a dog, like only a dog uh, whistle could be heard. Uh, yeah, so Julian, what were your thoughts on on last night's game or Tuesday night's game? Yeah, I thought it was a really good game. Um, it was it was end to end. Uh, although we had a, a clearer chances for for sure. Uh, I, the only regret, I suppose, is that we didn't shoot more in the second half because uh, a couple of the shots, like you said, from Glover and Tollard, you know, the the wind was moving in that direction, and if we had just taken one or two more, we we may have scored. But but that that goalie. You know, he's he's had a blinder, hasn't he? And um I think any other day we, we might have scored more than one against him. But um yeah, I agree with uh, with Joe's comments about uh, Andy Woodman being frightened of our, our front three. Um I was just t- totting up the goals. We've they've scored forty five goals um by middle of January. And you tell me any other front three that's got forty five goals. Uh, I mean, it's just an incredible turnout. And of course, they're doing the assist as well. You know, Tollage assisted on Saturday. Uh, Stokes' through ball last night was unbelievable. Uh, so I was I was right alongside it. And uh, the pace, the, 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 the accuracy, it was just a, a, a joy to behold. It really was. So you can see why Andy Woodman was, was pleased to get away with a point, I think, because you know, our front three at the moment is is deadly. I guess if there's one criticism, it's not a criticism. How, how can you criticise those guys? But um, Jack Barham has gone on a little bit of a goal drought. So perhaps he's due one on Saturday. There you go. I've set, set him up for a, for a couple of goals on Saturday because uh, his, his work rate is, again, phenomenal. And uh, it's, just a, it's a, just a joy to watch. The, the only probably disappointing thing was perhaps the crowd. You know, I was thinking beforehand, you know, we should be getting over 2,000 for this one. But having said that, people are obviously making a decision whether to go to the Rochdale game, the midweek game, or, or if they can get to both, then they will. So I would expect to see a much better crowd on Saturday, um, probably 2-3 or 2-4, I would have thought. 
But um, yeah, I just wanted again to mention sort of Tetek uh, with regard to performances last night. His link up play with Stokes, they both seemed you know, on, on a really good level. And you know, for me, he was just in the, in the centre of everything, I think. So uh, I'm just hoping that um, he's back from his, his fitness problems. And um, it's almost like signing a new player, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's kind of yeah. In contrast to the last couple of weeks, or well, Kidderminster and the Bishop Stortford game, where we were unable to kind of break those lines and get it between the midfield and attack, and Stokes was neither an attacker nor midfielder. Whereas last night it, we had a general, but the midfield three joined up with the front three, so Tetek and Stokes were able to do it, and then obviously Stokes, Tolach, and Barham were already, as we know, able to to work together. Um, and yeah, yeah, Barham's, Barham's work great last night. I would love to know how many uh, kilometers he ran last night. It was <laughs> it was everywhere. Um, obviously, it's, uh, Toledge also did the same, but Barham, I, f- I felt like he was just constantly running the channels, doing the hard yards. And um, yeah, yeah he's. I, f- I feel like he gets in so many good positions as well. I think he there's a couple in that second half where he's in the box and all, all right, the ball might be bobbling or it's away from his body a little bit, but if he gets any good contact on it towards the goal, it, he he will score even more than he does already. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, any other standouts from the f- performance? I know we've mentioned we've mentioned Glover and Tetek, I suppose, and, and Kobe Rose got a mention. Um, I, th- I think Geordie, uh, so good to have him back in there. And I think he, he's very unlucky with the, uh, the equaliser that his mad dive across the goal and save um, fell to Reynolds who put it away. I mean, I think, yeah, he looked a bit more assured with Geordie at the back, um, back in the sticks. But I wanted to just give a, I mean, a mention to Josh Stokes because I saw some stupid stuff going around social media about, well, his head's not going to be in it now. If there's any doubts about that, he put in another fantastic performance. And I was thinking, actually, he's just signed a three and a half year deal at a championship club. If he wants to, at the end of the season, be playing in the championship, he needs to maintain those performances. He needs to maintain those levels um, because it's a huge jump. And if he, you know, he wants to maybe get some time in pre-season and and make make a name for himself straight away, his he needs to keep those levels up because he doesn't want to be loaned back, you know, to a League One side or a League Two side. He probably wants he's gone there hoping to play. I imagine. So um, it was really good to see his performance levels maintained. I mean, I think he really does appreciate um, the shots. He was in the crowd at West Brom. Um, and I think has a lot of time for us and probably appreciates that we've given him a platform. So um, hopefully he can kick on and score the winner in the playoff final in, in May. <laughs> That's and the Tolage, dream. Like, yeah. And as well, sorry, we, we haven't mentioned Tolage actually that much considering he probably was the man of the match, I think. Absolutely. The um, match, yeah. We're just, you know, very diplomatic like that, aren't we? But it's, um, he was, yeah, terrifying. Um, I noted particularly when he receives the ball with his back to goal, sort of within his own half, and then pivots and then runs. His acceleration and his physicality, I think, as a defender, like if they're on his shoulder, they're just not getting the ball. Um, and he can take two, three players out of the game and try and tackle him um, because they know sort of if he gets a shot away, how dangerous can that be? And also... His passing game. <laughs> Ironically, in the first fifteen minutes, I wrote down Tollard hospital passes because I thought, oh god, his what well, his passing's off. And then for the rest of the game, he played absolutely phenomenally. So I forgave him that. But um, yeah, what a what a player he is. And I think he's just getting better by the game, and and he gives his all every game as well. Yeah, yeah. As you say, yeah. I think I actually think it's also coming with him maturing every game as well. And you know, I think. Earlier in the season, I think people were expecting him. I think from the preseason Farnborough red card that we we we'd signed this um, hot headed striker that was going to kick out and get silly yellow cards and things like that. But I, I see it; he gets you know people are trying to rile him up all the time, and he just won't rise to it. And he just he just the next time he gets the ball from the back to goal, he just turns him again and keeps doing it. Um, he did. Sli- he did that, slightly um, react. Oh, sorry. Carry on, Ian. Oh, yeah, no, it's interesting that uh, last year he was on loan at Salford, and they didn't rate him at all. So you wonder whether. Well, I, I know he's good enough for League Two, 
for sure. But um, you obviously didn't feel the love. And, and I think that's, like you mentioned earlier on, Joe, you know, I think the, the camaraderie and, and the fact that he is loved by everyone gives him that confidence to, to perform. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no idea what they didn't see in him. Um, but also, last last few minutes, he took it took his hairband off, or his hairband broke, and that was a sight to see. What a that was a head and shoulders advert if I've ever I've seen one. If he'd scored with that knee slid, that that would have been a perfect perfect um, advert for them. Um, yeah, I guess we didn't we didn't really mention at the top um, that that the Josh Stokes news that he's gone to Bristol City for a club what? record fee. <laughs> <laughs> you're nearby no joe come on <laughs> ish um yeah and we, we've signed josh barrett in in kind of stead it seems um who he got a run out um yesterday evening so i guess yeah your julian your your thoughts on the on stokes stokes's move to bristol city yeah well i'm quite pleased he's gone to bristol city because that's only an hour away from me so you know if i need to go and scout him and see how he's doing and then uh, then I can get over there quite easily but um um my first thoughts were 250 they've got an absolute steal um but then thinking about it yeah how many national league players have gone for 250 or more you know in the last 10 years um and whoever can come up with the answer there I'll, I'll be really impressed but it's, it's not going to be very many um and we've got a sell on clause as well these sell-on clauses really, really interest me because um, I've only found out this week, but a lot of the clubs are doing multiple sell-on clauses now. So rather than you just getting, say, 10% of the next transfer, potentially, uh, some of these sell-on clauses are every time he sells, goes to another club for a fee, then you could potentially get a fee from that. So Let's put some figures out there. So say he goes from Bristol City for 20 million. That'll be 2 million in the bank. And then he goes to Real Madrid for 50 million. That's another 5 million in the bank. So, um, yeah, so I, my my initial sort of 250 grand feel a little bit better, assuming that's the sort of negotiation they've done. And if they haven't, then um, perhaps I need to do the negotiations from now on. Absolutely. Well, they know where to find you now, so that's good. Um, yeah, there's there's lots of uh, you can do kind of appearances and these kind of things. If they don't play at all for Bristol City, then we won't give you anything, kind of thing. Even if it's you know a downgrade, like a two hundred grand sign uh, transfer down the leagues or something. Um, so yeah, I, I'm super happy for him. I think it's probably a great great club to go to, great level for him. I think. He, I mean, I said plenty of times this season that he's championship level to be honest but i didn't think he'd actually go to a championship club um this soon so yeah let's uh well enjoy him while he lasts we've got a lovely four hopefully five months with him um if we get to the playoffs um should we have a little preview of the rochdale and uh wieldstone game so the next next couple that we've got coming up this is basically every every seven days we seem to have two games and uh, yeah, first Saturday home game for the first time since Eastleigh, which was on the 16th of December. So uh, a big one for us. They're on. They're currently sitting seventh, one on the same points as us. So they're eleven goals ahead on goal difference. Um, so Joe, I'll come to you first. How are you, how are you feeling for the Rochdale game? Um, I think after last night, I'm a lot more confident than I was after Saturday, um, approaching a team in and around us. I think it might sound a little bit silly to say this is a six-pointer, but it almost feels like one at this stage of the season because I think we've got 18 games left and um, any territory lost on teams around you at this time can, you know, you might look back on games like this and go, cool, we could have beaten them. Um I don't think Rochdale, when we went to their place, were particularly a brilliant side. I felt of the two sides, um, we we have better quality. Um, they haven't exactly kicked on since. They're very inconsistent, which we're very familiar with. Um, I think anything, you know, less than a point would 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 consider that a big disappointment. Um, but I would, I think, we need to go into that game really wanting a win. Um, yeah, 
I think a, a wins a wins what we need, and um, we can come close to how we played last night. I think we will win. Um, but if we play like we did at Kidderminster and Bishop Stortford, then yeah, <laughs> which older shot turns up? That's the biggest question. That's the great. That's the fifty-fifty draw. That should be, um, yeah. What what old shot town would turn up? But I think yeah, we've got a good good chance. They've had some, as you say, like inconsistent results. Um, uh, yeah, the beat Kidham. It's the two 0 in their last game, which was three weeks ago. They haven't actually played for a while because they've had two consecutive postponements. Um, and then they lost to Fylde away, but then beat them at home. So it's it's hard to know. Um, much about them. They've got two players that have currently scored 10 goals this season. So they're, they're kind of, they've got a similar kind of front line to us um, alongside, I think it's Ian Henderson, who's 39 years old, who scored against us in the uh, the earlier game. Um, Julian, what do you think of uh, the uh, Rochdale game coming up? Um, yeah, I think it's an important game, actually. Uh, if you look at who we've got left to play at home, it's all the the top teams because we have played all the top teams away from home apart from one so uh, our home form is going to be crucial to the playoffs uh, I think we need to win this we've only won one of the last six so uh, we're quite fortunate in that quite a few teams around us have been inconsistent too so uh, I think this is as Joe would say a, a potential six pointer and I think because of the confidence from Bromley I think we'll get the the um the team that we want to see turning up on Saturday. Uh, so I'm confident for a win. And then uh, we come to the Tuesday after, which is Wildstone away. There are train strikes, um, Southwestern Railway and Southeastern. So I'm going to struggle to make it uh, a couple of buses for me. Um, so if you're making it, enjoy the M25, which will be very busy uh, on Tuesday. Um, they had a waterlogged pitch um, this week. So I don't know if they had some sort of different weather, but I've no idea what, what happened there. Um, the pitch isn't known for being very well drained. Um, and yeah, the big news is that their manager, Stuart Maynard, um, left to take up the Notts County job. Um, and yeah, he seems to be well revered with Willstone fans. Um, they've got a few games in hand and obviously they've had another one because of this postponement. Um, if they were to win them all, they'd be above both us and Rochdale. So it seems quite apt that we're we're playing them. They're basically another would-be playoff team. Um, I'll come to you first, Joe. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on on that Tuesday night game at Wildstone? Um, I think it's going to be quite a scrappy encounter from what I remember. Their pitch is uh, not the best surface, to put it politely. Um, it won't be goalless. Looking at some of their previous results this season, they, um, they don't struggle to score. And um, at times they haven't struggled to concede um they drew four four with um I think it was Hartley Paul. Um it's not a game I'm hugely excited about just because I think it'll be quite an ugly encounter. Um we won't be able to play our normal game, I don't think. Like I said about the pitch, we will struggle. But um sometimes it's not the biggest pitch, it's one of the smaller pitches. I think we'll be able to get, you know, if we can really if we can really press them um on the smaller pitches on the counter, we can get up the pitch quite quickly. And um yeah, I think it's going to be a tough place to go Tuesday night in a cold, wet January. Um, the performance is less of an issue. It's just try and get the three points. Um, yeah, not the most appealing fixture, but it's it's a proper National League fixture, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you got to tick them off. You got to tick off the world stones to get to the uh, to get to the South Ends away uh, next month. And uh, and what about you, Julian? What are your thoughts ahead of that one? Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting game. Actually, I. I hear what Joe's saying about the pitch, which could make a difference. But um, I think we Wilson were the, the first team to really surprise me with with the possession game. And I think that was down to Stuart Maynard. I remember when they beat us last season, I was, I was just so impressed with how the players were all over the place and, and the amount of passes they put together. And yeah, that's obviously why he's gone to Knox County, very similar sort of style. And um, yeah, I thought it was only a matter of time before he was snapped up, even though he's part time. And remember that Wilson are part time as well. So, you know, they they've done so well to to be one of those few part time teams that are left. Um, so I think it's going to be an interesting game. I think we're both going to be trying to play the same game. So I think you'll find that um, they will probably 
um, sit back a little bit and, and wait for us when we've got the ball and, and we'll probably do the same. So a bit of a chess game. Um, having said that, it'll probably be complete, um, whatever you want to call it, um, and end up 5 all. But um, uh, yeah, interesting game. I think whoever comes out tactically will will win the game. I don't think it'll be a draw. I think one of us will either win it. Uh, let's hope it's us. Yeah, yeah. I, I did just get a flashback to their possession game, which bored me to death. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Stuart Maynard. I'm sure you're great, but it bored me to death. <laughs> Maybe it's because old shot weren't keeping the ball. But it was boring, but uh, yeah. Okay, that's the uh, that's the Rochdale Woodstone upcoming games sorted. <laughs>